A feud between the governor of Edo State, Godwin Obasaki, and the national chairman of the APC, Adams Oshomole, continues as the Edo State chapter of the All Progressive Congress, APC, has suspended its national chairman, Adams Oshomole, stating that he is trying to disintegrate the party in the state. The chairman of the party, that's the Edo State chapter, Anselm Ojezwa, and the state secretary of the APC, Lawrence Oka, were also sacked. How's this going to pan out? Well, uh, I still have in the studio Biodo Shomi. He's a political analyst. He's going to try to make sense of all of this drama. There has been fire on the mountain since after the elections uh, uh, in Edo State, especially for the House of Assembly, the swearing in, and if the notice was given or not. It's, it's been a lot of, in, I mean, I don't know, too many shenanigans going on in Edo State, at the detriment of the electorate, by the way. Now, it's tit for tat, suspension wise. What do you think is happening? Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's action and reaction. Um, Adams Oshiomole, you know, um, handed over to Obaseki and played a major role in his election in 2015. So, and consequently, um, he demanded to control the House of Assembly you know, brought in the speaker and key officers. So we saw the turmoil over uh, impeachment or no impeachment and all that in the first term, term of Obaseki. Now, Obaseki is going for his second term. And Adams Oshomole is in for his second term. Adams wants to control the House of Assembly as the godfather. And um, we have an, a more assertive Obaseki now in the second term saying, no, no, enough of that the House of Assembly will appoint its own representatives. So they went about and appointed their own representatives. And um, of course, that led to another turmoil. Uh, the faction led by Shomole, one way or the other, tried to get the Senate involved. Uh, is it the Senate or the, the House, House of, of Reps? House of Reps involved with a view to take over the power you know, of um, uh, the, the State, State House Assembly. of Assembly. It has happened before. That would not be unprecedented. It happened in Ogun State when Gadania was in power. And then Dimeji Bankoli was the speaker, and they had to use up the, you know, take over the powers of the House of Assembly. So they tried to do that, they, but Obaseki won't budge, mm -hmm. and they went to court and got a restraining order against the House of Reps, you know, from taking over that power. So since then, we've had attempts to make up. And then the whole thing of course, will fall because apart we again. saw it on TV where yeah. they both kissed and made up, and we yes. thought that that would be the end of it, and everything would go back to status quo. But it, that doesn't seem to be the case right now. No, because it's also about who controls the federal appointments and other state appointments. It's not just about the House of Assembly, you know. And um, uh, Adams faction believes that they have a major stake in the government, and therefore. Uh, they should be allowed to nominate quite a substantial part of those appointments. Obaseki is determined to be his own man that, look, I am only going to work with people, appoint people who I can work with, mm -hmm. and then nominate people who I think can represent the state at the federal level. So that is the cross of the matter. The attempt to resolve the issue initially was genuine. They actually embraced, you know, uh, openly. But Subsequent steps, um, you know, appointments being made, you know, created a problem, you know, for the Adams faction. So this is a situation where you have the godson, you know, fighting the godfather, you know, over the control of political appointments in Edo State. I like to, you and know, that I like to, I like to read through in between the lines. All I hear you say is, these people determine what they want, and totally forget about us who are the people that they are supposed to be working for. So where do we come in? We, the people who need their services, we put them there, whether by hook or crook, they're supposed to be serving us. But it sounds more like it's a party of sharing the cake and whoever the masses are, nobody cares about them. Yeah, to be so? yeah, to be fair, um, Governor Baseki came out publicly uh, to state that his refusal to share the cake, the state cake, uh, with um, the national chairman uh, was the major cross of the matter. That was before the embrace. He actually said that, and I read it, and I had it. But the fact of the matter is what led to the removal of Adam Sochomole now 
is simply because they expelled him from or suspend him from the um, from his branch is simply because they are hitting back his action and reaction of course they know that will not stand because if you, in line with um, APC constitution I think the National Working Committee has to ratify such an appoint uh, so, such um, removal suspension, suspension mm -hmm. of a man of um, Oshomole standing, that is the national chairman. So we, 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 whatever is playing behind the scene, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe NWC will ratify it. Maybe this will be the end of Adam Oshomole's um, chairmanship of EPC. No one knows. But the fact of the matter is it will not be the end of the struggle in Edo State. What worries me in all this is what about governance? Because there is a huge distraction for the governor currently. Exactly. And he needs to be able to focus, you know, on governance so as to deliver the dividends of democracy for the people of Edo State. But is that a priority? And that was my question. Is that a priority? Not just for that should be a governor priority. Basaki, but every other governor in this country, including the presidency, is the service of the people a priority and not most priority? Do that, we top the least for these guys? That should the be question. the priority. But in this situation, the battle now is the priority. It's like this. If your house is on fire, you are cooking soup, you are about to serve soup to the children, and the house is on fire, the first thing is you want to get out first and then think about how to rescue your children. You won't think about the soup. So in this situation currently, the focus of the Obaseki's government is on you know, tackling Oshomole and trying to contain him. Nobody is really thinking about governance. No matter what, governance will suffer. And that worries me a lot. And I think um, this may be, this may raise the consciousness of the people about the dangers of godfatherism in our politics. That, that is what we are beginning to see with Adams, uh, what is uh, happening in Edo State. So I don't necessarily think there's anything wrong in God's son challenging their godfather, but at the end of the day, it should not be to the detriment of the people of Edo State. So you're saying that the drama that is taking place right now may not or will not affect or should be no as way. the national chairman, being that he wields a lot of power. But if the people at your grassroots, the people at your core are saying we do not want you, should that not shake the very core of who you are? Of course it will. Of course it will call its leadership into question, even if the National Working Committee refused to endorse uh, the decision of his local unit. Of course um, it will call its leadership into question, of course it will lead to more problems, you know, because Adams will still want to wage uh, will the power of the chairman and the local chapter including the state chapter will refuse to recognize them so in that situation we are in for a long drawn battle but if the national working committee endorses the decision then that will be the end of adam because then uh, a caretaker committee chairman would a caretaker chairman will be in place before the convention i mean before the elections during and after it's been a very very tough time for the mm. APC national chairman, Adam Sushomole. We know how governors have been on his case, you know, because of the, take for example, the German Zamfer and River States, they lost all their seats because of one drama or the other, mm. uh, or the party chairman mm. deciding to lord his own people over whoever the other members of the party wanted. Could this also be the beginning of problems for the APC? Because there have been questions and polls as to if the APC will make it past 2019, I mean, into 2023. Yes. Um, if you look at it, Adam brought all these problems on himself. Uh, we saw all the controversy that trailed the gubernatorial primaries, um, the national primaries in many states, including some state primaries, uh, and we saw the whole problem. So he created it for himself. His excessive interference in all those elections created so much problem. <coughs> some of the governors actually resisted him to the extent that two governors were actually suspended from the party. Uh, but maybe it's a payback time. Maybe there are also people working behind the scene. No one knows. But the fact of the matter is this. Um, that crisis actually cost Adam some credibility in terms of his leadership style. You know, I can remember people like uh, Professor Isesage, you know, raising issues around, uh, we have want um, uh, Adam Soshomole, you know, to slow down and stop be behaving like a labor leader when you are the leader of, or the chairman of a political party. So, 
there are concerns being expressed quietly here, left, right, and center, and there are speculations about the fate of Adams. So all these are not helping. What now was in the matter is the fact that even in his own home base, people are now challenging his authority. So that would be a big dent on Adams Oshomole himself. Interesting. Just before we go, um, the opposition, and lots of people have also said the opposition is not really playing its part because when the tables were turned under the former administration, they were really playing the opposition. They now, who sit as the government of the day, they played the opposition pretty well. But do you see the opposition taking advantage of the drama and the imbroglio going on in the APC to maybe step up their game? Well, that should be expected. Um, from the opposition. But do you see it happening but, from the body language that they've been displaying? No. The, in many states, the opposition seems to be very weak. The only feeble efforts being made um, to create a viable opposition in the media um, is at the national level. When you talk about the two, the, the leading opposition party, the PDP, but in so many states, for instance, in Ogun State, PDP is almost dead. In Edo State, PDP is in comatose, and that's the truth of the matter. And even when you look at Lagos State, PDP is also sick. So they're really not doing much at the state level in terms of providing constructive opposition you know, to ruling parties. And because of that, APC is uh, having its way in all issues. So you cannot really blame APC. We rather blame the opposition for not living up to expectations. I'm not defending APC by any means, but it's actually looking at the fact that we have weak opposition at the state level. At the national level, it's even a bit better. So they need to go back. The opposition needs to go back and actually practice the craft of constructive opposition. Without doing that, then we, our democracy will be in peril. Well, uh, you couldn't have said it any better. Bjorn Shomi is a political analyst, and he's been talking with us on the show. Thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure. All right, well, we'll take a short break for a plus package, and when we return, I will give you my take. The House of Representatives has described the ban on the sale of petrol to border communities as ill-advised and untenable. The House, following a heated debate by Honorable Sada Soli, representing Kata Jibia Federal Constituency of Kastina State, said the decision has brought untold hardship to residents of the communities as it has affected their businesses and livelihoods. Honorable Soli accused the Nigerian Customs Service of failing in its responsibilities to mark the borders and using the ban as an easy way to cover their constitutional negligence. Those stations that they say they should not discharge, they were constructed by law. They were declared by DPR. They were constructed and they were registered by Corporate Affairs Commission. No, no arrangement was made to cater for these communities. Today, if my people travel from Jibia to Kasena, it's 45 kilometers to buy petrol, to come to power their generators, to do irrigation, they confiscate the petrol along the way. Sir, this is not acceptable. If the customs are failing to do their job, if they, if they, if they are covering up on the understanding that there is a smuggling of this product, who allows the smuggling? Let them shut down any petrol station that is engaged in smuggling, not inflict this hardship on Nigerian citizens. In matters like this, we have a lot of stakeholders that need to be taken into consideration before arriving at such a very far-reaching decision. Now, many, many Nigerians are suffering because of this decision, and it is very absurd for, a, for an agency of government to add more difficulty to Nigerians. We all know the borders are closed, but they still allow things to go in and out. I'm a living witness, and I stand to be corrected. Therefore, yesterday, I was there around 1 a.m. Nobody knows. I saw what they are doing. So, sir, the custom need to be invited here and they need to be questioned. This is the National Assembly. We need to know what is going to happen before you take any instructions, such very weighty orders to shut down the border, 20 kilometers. It's time for my take. A hate speech bill that is punishable by death or death by hanging who determines what hate speech is in the Nigerian context? Could the lines between the criticism of political leaders and powerful men and inciting sentiments across 
religious and tribal lines be blurred? Or, or are our lawmakers misplacing the priorities of its citizens? It's a big question. What bill has been passed for election theory or looting of public funds by those who are in the political class? I mean, is hate speech really a problem in today's Nigeria? Or are the ruling class afraid of the shadows? Will Nigerians sit and watch or let this slide? Well, if you haven't seen or read the contents of that bill, do so now, because that way you too can determine if this is worth the whole fuss. I am Mary Anna Cohn, and it's been Plus Politics.